Hi everyone, I'm Annie Jean-Baptiste and I lead product inclusion at Google. I'm so excited to be here with you all today and I wanted to welcome you to learning more about product inclusion. It may feel like a new concept, but it's really something that we can all have a part in. So at Google, we talk about building for everyone. And so how do we lean into that? It's really about making sure that no matter where in the world you live, what color your skin is, how old you are, or any of the things that make you, you, you feel seen, validated, uplifted, and thought of in the product design process and when you pick up a Google product. So Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. The product inclusion really leans into the universal part. We have billions of users all over the globe, and we want to make sure that Google is helpful to them in the moments that matter most. When we think about product inclusion, we're looking at 12 dimensions of diversity. So things like race, age, gender, ability, socioeconomic status, and more. We're also thinking about the intersections of those dimensions. So using myself as an example, I'm a black woman and I'm also left-handed. It's not like I'm black on Monday, left-handed on Tuesday, and a woman on Wednesday. All of these things are within me and they affect how I move through the world. It affects how the world receives me and it definitely affects how I leverage products. And so it's really important to think holistically about all of our users to make sure that the demographics that make them who they are, are present and thought of throughout the product design process. The tragedy of data means that if we don't have an inclusive input, then we won't have an inclusive output. It's important to recognize that technology can have bias if we're not intentional about bringing an inclusive lens throughout the entire product design process. One thing that's also unique about product inclusion is that we balance the business and the human case. There's a misconception that underrepresented groups don't have power. But as you'll see, there are 1 billion people in the world with a disability. U.S. Black consumers have $1.4 trillion in purchasing power. And we're seeing record growth with mobile app usage and users coming online from places like Nigeria. So it's really important to understand that as a business grows, it's important to think about a diverse set of constituents. Now I'd like to walk you through some of the findings on the research for the business case for inclusion that we've been doing over the past year. The first finding is that there are four main touch points in the product inclusion system. And when you're thinking end to end about product design, there are many touch points where you could bring an inclusive lens. But what we found were that teams came back to these touch points time and time again, and it really affected their output. Those four points are the ideation, user research and design, user testing, and marketing phases. So it may be that teams looked at ideation and marketing, or user research and user testing, or another combination, but it was really important that they took their learnings and cascaded them throughout the product design process. Another interesting finding was that no matter who you are, the majority of users prefer inclusive product design and inclusive marketing. So it's not just that underrepresented groups want to feel seen and validated. It's actually that the majority of users wanted to see diversity reflected in both products and marketing. The final point of research that was really interesting was that teams, regardless of makeup, could build more inclusively. So as we are all moving towards teams that represent the world accurately, it's important to note that you can be intentional about bringing an inclusive lens regardless of your team's representation. So I think that this is really an exciting thing for all of us. We can all work to make products and services that accurately reflect the world. And it's about asking who else and thinking through what voices have historically been at the margins that you can bring to the center and really co-create and collaborate to make better outcomes for everyone. Pictures tell stories. It doesn't really matter if it's a selfie or if it's a portrait that somebody is taking of another person. You are sharing in that human moment. Uh, let's take a picture of you two. One, two, three. No, he's too dark. So this is where the discussion started. Here, just use my phone. It's got a better sensor. Better sensor? What does that even mean? Color tuning is an extremely complicated process. When we look at images, what we try to do is figure out how much of a difference there is between, let's say, a reference image and the image that we actually are trying to quantify. We were running some tests on a product, and it was the proximity sensor we were testing. And we said, oh, it looks like it does 60 centimeters. And we looked at each other and we go, we're both white. The technology itself, as many people will say, is not racist. It's just that it wasn't tested properly to make sure 
that the designers weren't unconsciously biased. Hey, there's an entire world out there and we want to make sure this works for everybody. I love the fact that we get to influence cameras, that we get to share those experiences of life and emotion. And to me, that is what imaging is about. It is a vehicle to express humanity. Take a picture of you too. One, two, three. What I love about that video is that it shows that no matter who you are, you can have a stake in product inclusion. If you make sure that you're humble and ask others to come in and co-create with you, you can build an outcome that's better for everyone. The next example is Duo Low Light, which is our video calling feature. The team was very intentional about being proactive, but bringing an inclusive lens from the onset. And one of the things they thought about was making sure that everyone was represented accurately, no matter their lighting conditions. It's important to note that skin tone is only one of the dimensions that they thought of. You can think about people who may have Wi-Fi versus 4G access, or who maybe are calling their friends and family by candlelight. It's really important to make sure that multiple dimensions of diversity are considered. And now I'd like to walk you through three principles of product inclusion. So if you remember anything from this presentation, I hope you remember these three things. The first one is to address the user. We talked about 12 dimensions of diversity and the intersections of those dimensions. So things like age, race, ability, gender, and more really need to come into the fold when you're building for everyone and with everyone. The second is to start with equity. This shouldn't be an afterthought or a checklist. Again, think end to end about your product design process and where are there key points where you can ask who else and bring an inclusive lens. The third principle is to continually test. It's important to understand that we're all on a journey and it's important to always be constantly iterating and improving based on past results. You want to make sure that you're talking to the community and collaborating with the community on an ongoing process. It's not a checklist or one and done. Product inclusion works when everyone has accountability. It can't live within one person, one team. It really has to be cascaded throughout. Google has taken a top down and bottoms up approach to make sure that everyone has a stake in building for everyone and with everyone. And Googlers across the company are doing this work from Eng to product managers, to program managers, marketers, and our leaders. Googlers across the company are driving product inclusion. Again, this can't just sit within one team. So it's important that everyone feels they have a stake. We actually have 2000 Googlers who we call inclusion champions who have opted in to helping us test our products to build more inclusively. Everyone is excited about making sure that we're building for everyone and with everyone. Thanks so much for listening to this short presentation on product inclusion. I hope that it helps you think about building for everyone with everyone and bringing an inclusive lens to the work that you do every day.